Greetings. Thanks for tuning in to Channel Peace if you can find it. I would like to give my analysis on the uh, Karen recording of the fatal elimination of Sonia Macy. 36 year old mother of two who had believed she heard prowlers outside her home and authorities finally showed up. It was 1 a.m. And they seemed to have been, it was two of them, a little perturbed because it took her a while to get to the door. It was 1 a.m. She probably had called them most likely a while back and decided to just undress because she mentioned that they asked her what took her so long and she stated she was getting dressed and she probably I, I'm getting ahead of myself but anyway they said they looked around outside the front and back of her yard and they didn't see anyone and that should have been the end of it they asked about a black SUV that was in her driveway and she was unaware she was dis coherent. She probably was asleep and woke up. I don't know. I'm just speculating and put some. I'm getting ahead of myself again. But she said she didn't know whose black XUV it was. And so, that really should have been the end of it. It was 1 a.m., but they took it further, and somehow they ended up in her home. And she was fooling around with her mobile. She was fooling around with her mobile. And they asked for her ID, but they were looking around in rooms, which they had no business doing. They had no business coming into her home, but they did. So she wanted, they asked for her license. They asked for her last name and she was confused. And you could tell that she was I don't know, sleepy, discoherent, or maybe suffering from mental illness. That could be the case. But they were very unsympathetic towards her, especially the one that was the head of it all. And he he was huge. He's huge. He looks to be 6'8", 300 pounds. And she's a frail little woman that was confused when they asked for her ID. She, she didn't know where it was. And she asked them to hold uh, uh, her Bible. And so they asked for her ID. She couldn't find that. She said she had some papers. And she was on the mobile speaking to some other kind of authority on the line. And she asked them to hold on. I don't know if they waited or not. But she asked them to wait because she was looking for some papers that she wanted to share with these officers that came to uh, see about the prowlers that ended up into her home. She goes over to the stove and they say, uh, oh, turn that fire off. We don't need fire on uh, uh, right now and get away from that hot steaming water and she said I rebuke you in the name of Jesus and the big huge officer said don't you do that I will sh shoot you in your fucking face and then he pulled his gun and she cowered down and said I'm sorry and he said he did what he said so they saying it's premeditated because he did what he said. And she was of no threat. Her hands was up and she cowered down. And the pot most likely dropped because then later on he accused of water touched their feet. But it was a big, vast area between them. A counter with some things on it. So she was no threat. And then they had ample time to back out and, and, and leave if they felt threatened. He's told her, I will shoot you in your fucking face. When she said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And he said, don't do that. And she, he pulled his revolver. 
And then she said, I'm sorry. And obviously the pop dropped, but he did what he said. And so that happened. Oh boy, fucked up. And so they administered no aid and they farted around. And then finally the second one said, let me go and get a, the medical kit. And the one that did the extinguishing of Sonia Macy that called them for help. He said, don't worry about it. Something to that effect. It was a headshot. She's gone. So about 20 of them, Caucasians, policemen, cops, they didn't give high fives and pats on the back. They were looking for the gun. He said, it was no gun. It was some water. Scared of some water. And so now, okay, they know he's in trouble. And so they finally filed, fired him after two weeks after it happened. And he had two DUIs. I mean, he's he's not, he's, he, he was lying at the start. Trying to make like that she threatened them. And was going to throw it on him. She, she was like that. So, but Ben Crump is on the scene. And see, this is what's getting on my nerves. So, when he comes on the scene, isn't it a payoff? Is that where black folks are getting their reparation? And that's why we're so confused, thinking that we have a made it. If you talk to some of us, they say there is no racism. And that was just sheer racism. Because if she had been a Caucasian, it would not have been. It would not have been. If she had been a dog, it wouldn't have happened. I believe there's a, got to be some type of initiation because they're too gung-ho to, to the nail one of us. Even with all the immigrants coming over here, the gangs and everything, and the threats and everything that they have come against the cops, no one has, they have not did any harm to them. But even after George Floyd, you thought, you would think that they would give us a break. Not so. They are consistently, and I don't care who's saying that things are better between us. It is not. That's the confusion of it all. We are in an open prison, and they are knocking us off. That's part of their plan. If it ain't the air, water, and food, it's absolutely just knocking us off. Why are all these Caucasian cops in our neighborhood? And then someone was mentioning that they need training and misconduct and all of that. They don't need training. They don't like us. It's a, a de they detest us. And they, I think it's because they women walking around out of character. With the full lips and the behind and twerking and, 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 and marrying black men. They sick of this. And they want to take us out of here. And we do nothing. They don't do this to the Arabs, the Asians, or the Indians. Just us. But we gung-ho in the religion of voting for a presidency that has nothing to do with your poor ass in the ghetto. Stick with the local voting. Because the presidency works for corporations and, and the big to-dos. It has nothing to do with you. This concerns you. It could be your sister, your, your, your daughter. Your cousin, your friend, your just a friend. She have children. She have a family. And so it, I'm sick of no justice, no peace. We need punishment. And so if Ben Crump come on the scene, that means is it a payout and there's no trial? I don't want this to be too long, but this it's just I, we do nothing about it. We still going home, some of us, hyped up into the religion of voting. And Jesus was not there for her when she said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. We have no help. No one is going to come. And, and it's president, what's happening over there in GAZA, they feel less about us. And it's evident because this is what I'm hearing allegedly. That the cops over here are trained by IDF. And the FBI already indicated, stated, 
that clan and other evil Caucasian American organizations have infiltrated the police department. I had believed that they were getting their training from the military and coming into the police department and then coming specifically into the black hood. Where are the black cops? Who do they arrest? Who did they, what do they do? And they ain't about nothing because to be around all that hate all day long, you know you hear them talk about us. What they doing, what they want to do to us, how much they can't stand us. And you got to listen to that all day. How can you? They talking about your people. You got cousins, nieces, and nephews. It could be. It's horrible. And we wrapped up into voting. It's getting worse. But it's getting to be. We take everything to the extreme. I'm going to end because it's rather long. Nothing is going to happen. You would think after George Floyd, we would be safe. Not so. And our reparations are coming from. We're millionaires now because of all this city paying the payout. No qualified immunity. These cops don't have to pay out. It's the citizens. And so there you go. You got the millionaires. And there you go. We could get the houses and the cars now. That's our reparations. Because it's hunting season. And that's the price. But they don't... For these clubs they have where you have to pay, uh, extinguishing club where they pay to go hunting and just take away something's life. Well, the, the, the city is paying off because that's what they're doing. They're taking the life and the city is paying. Thanks for tuning in to Channel Peace if you can find it. It's sickening. It's sickening because nothing is going to happen. Nobody cares. They don't like us. And this is our fault. And MLK, I'm not into him at all. Because before 1965, we had a chance. We forced ourselves on them. We demanded to live in their neighborhoods, eat in their restaurants so they can bring us all kind of you know what when they serve us and just mingle with them. Why couldn't we just be like the Indians, the Asians, and, the, and, and everybody else? And just stick to ourselves. Because it has been held. They said, you know what? Since you forced us to tolerate your ass among us, we're going to sacrifice some of our women. We're going to allow that. But we're going to fuck y'all up. Up here. And they did a thorough job on us. We are just screwed. Between religion and voting and the intermarrying. And the illusion that we have arrived because they allow a few of us to be millionaires. But it's supposed to be 50 million of us, huh? So they allow 2 million to be millionaires. They all right. So you could say there is no more racism and no white supremacy. Not so. I'm going to. Thanks for tuning in to Channel Peace if you could find.